Well, 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 welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I am CJ Jones, Mr. TNTBS, and this is Elephant Exposed, brought to you by TNTBS Media. And we have an update for all of our viewers out there. So I'm just going to get straight into it and go ahead and bring it up. We're not going to pull any surprises on you guys today. If you've been on your computer, your laptop, or any of your multimedia devices, you already know what I'm going to share with you. And it's been going around uh, like crazy already about uh, the uh, special announcement that just came from the uh, United States AG's office. And here we go. And let's see here. Earlier today, I spoke with the family of Brianna Taylor. This morning, they were informed that the Justice Department has charged four current and former Louisville Metro Police Department officers with federal crimes related to Ms. Taylor's death. Those alleged crimes include civil rights offenses, unlawful conspiracies, unconstitutional use of force, and obstruction offenses. The four defendants were charged through two separate indictments and one information. I'm going to begin today by discussing the civil rights offenses that stem from the falsification of a search warrant. Mm. We allege that these offenses resulted in Ms. Taylor's death. These charges focus on the conduct of the Louisville Metro Police Department's Place-Based Investigations Unit. In the first indictment filed today, we allege that in early 2020, that unit was investigating suspected drug trafficking in the west end of Louisville. On March 12, 2020, officers from that unit sought five search warrants they claimed were related to the suspected drug trafficking. Four of those warrants targeted properties in the West End where that activity was allegedly occurring. A fifth search warrant was for Brianna Taylor's home, which was approximately 10 miles away from the West End. Mm. The federal charges announced today allege that members of the Place-Based Investigations Unit falsified the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant of Ms. Taylor's home that this act violated federal civil rights laws and that those violations resulted in Ms. Taylor's death. The charges announced today also allege that the officers responsible for falsifying the affidavit that led to the search took steps to cover up their unlawful conduct after Ms. Taylor was killed. Wow and very good. I'm kind of mixed emotion right now because in a sense from the very first exposure to when this was exposed, brought out to our attention that a young lady gets shot to death while sleeping um, at the hands of police officers. Because, you know, it's always, there always has to be a, a catchy phrase to get people to look at what was going on. But anyway, so besides uh, us just looking at the catchy phrase, there, there was an actual issue that was taking place during this time. And when you begin to go into your research to find out, okay, what actually took place. Um, to me, um, you don't even have to have any law enforcement kind of experience or any of those things. You, to me, this was just common sense, common knowledge. And the questions that was being asked during this time was, how does a person end up getting shot and killed in this manner? 
That's a human question. So, of course, it's fishy at best. And then, you know, here we are two years later uncovering the truth. But um, I'm going to go ahead and let the Attorney General finish up. But I had to cut in. But yeah, so far, so good. And I'm happy in a sense, in the sense of there, there will be proper accountability. Um, but at what cost? Miss Brianna Taylor is no longer with us. But let's continue. We allege that defendants Jaynes and Goodlett conspired to knowingly falsify an investigative document that was created after Ms. Taylor's death. We also allege that they conspired to mislead federal, state, and local authorities who were investigating the incident. For example, we allege that in May 2020, those two defendants met in a garage where they agreed to tell investigators a false story. Wow. This indictment separately alleges that Defendant Meany mm -hmm. lied to the FBI during its investigation of this matter. Another indictment filed today alleges that after Ms. Taylor was shot, another LMPD officer, Defendant Brett Hankison, moved from the doorway to the side of her apartment mm -hmm. and fired 10 more shots through a window and a sliding glass door, both of which were covered with blinds and curtains. Defendant Hankison has been charged with. Now, for those of us who do know a little bit of firearm safety, um, that's one of our top rules right there, being broken and clearly violated. And then on top of that, it's being broken and violated clearly by a uniformed uh, officer, in which at least whenever I saw that portion that at least that particular one officer was going to be held to the highest extent of the law. Uh, no, that's not what happened at all. And then come to find out, oh, he was acquitted. He was acquitted from, from that. And they found the smallest uh, charge to even charge him with. So even if he was found guilty, it was going to be nothing either way. So either way, that was going to be a win-win for him. But now we're hearing a different story. Two civil rights offenses alleging that he willfully used unconstitutionally excessive force while acting in his official capacity as an officer. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News. You All right. So, as we can see, it's kind of a shame, though, that the United States Attorney General has to be brought in with federal investigators to come in and do the job that the state could have did from the very start with their very own attorney general. I forget his name, but I know he's the uh, the black guy that has the inside uh, track with uh, Mitch McConnell because he's either engaged to or married by now to uh, uh, Mitch McConnell's, I think she's a granddaughter of his or something like that. So if I got my information wrong, then not that big of a deal on that side but um the thing about it is whenever we saw the connection or well, whenever they started looking into the attorney general of the state of Kentucky um I don't know whether it was just like from this uh false uh hope that I guess that we had as a black community that oh this is a black AG he's going to hold these people accountable 
I'm going to tell you something that I just told my son not too long ago. Just because we as the black community share the same skin as far as the color, our hue, does not mean that we all share the same interest of each other. So what do you mean? I mean it like this. Just because at face value, this attorney general is a brother, does not mean that he is a brother. And money and connections or the access to money connections and you're already in a position of power and public trust you're going to want to keep that going so you hook up and you rub elbows with the right kinds of people and you stay in that position however keep in mind how you got there so it would behoove that individual that has that type of network to always be on the favorable side of the person that probably helped get that individual to that particular position. Meaning that you got to carry out uh, some tasks. Now, I'm pretty sure that the AG of Kentucky is doing or he's going to be doing a lot of backpedaling right about now and a lot of what we call CYA and speaking of that let's see what the local news of that state has to say on the matter. Well, as we continue to dive deeper into the new charges and exactly what they mean, we want to bring on Sam Markison. He's a U of L professor with the Louis D. Brandeis School of Law. Thanks so much for coming on. Happy to be here. So we want to start by jumping right into it. A lot of people wondering if Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron missed something when he only indicted one officer back in 2020. See right there, right there. When, okay, here's how I look at it this stuff right here when the media starts to put out um i call them keywords uh the attorney the attorney general of the state uh must have made a misstep or misunderstood something they are already trying to set the platform for his escape but it's not because they're really concerned about him it is because of who is he connected with. Please understand this, guys. It is not that anybody has a genuine concern about even this man. Because it really, but it's because it is who he is connected to. It's all about the connection, guys. It's all about who you know and who you are networked to. So if he looks bad, he's going to make the people that he's connected to look bad, or you'll start to see the distancing. If they come to, if, if they come to find out that, that he is really looking um, bad in the eyesight of the public, watch, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're going to start seeing the distancing from all the people that he has connected himself with. Watch, just watch. What's your take? Did he make a mistake? I think it's very difficult make a to see these indictments today as anything other than a rebuke of the approach taken by the attorney general and the limited scope of the case that was charged with so many more things being in this indictment. The overlap really only applies to Hankinson and the use of force 
in the actual raid on the apartment. And there's your, there's your hand of distraction. That was what I call the, the, the uh, softball spin. Um, I'm not saying that, that this was done on purpose. I'm just saying that when you have podcasters like myself, we're going to dig deep because we're going to remember. We're going to go all the way back to whenever they actually made the death of Miss Brianna Taylor a political point. And because of that, you are looking at different people in offices to either take charge, control, and, and if it came out favorable favorable to them and for them they will be the ones that will jump in front of the camera and be like hey that was me I did that but now that the situation is look like it's going to blow up in this attorney general's face now it's oh ooh, uh, about that you know what he he made a mistake you know what? It really wasn't even about him. It was really about the officer that pretty much just got a slap on the wrist for shooting to and through an apartment and you didn't even know what you were shooting at and into and forgetting, not that you didn't know, and or disregarding what was behind those blinds. And forgetting the or purposely disregarding the fundamental firearm safety rule of not e of not only knowing your target but having a of knowing what's behind your target this officer clearly did not care and did not practice due regard for anyone in anything but yet and still he received a slap on the wrist charged with a very minimal charge and then and then he was acquitted from it and so now it seems like to me even uh with this uh expert being here on this panel uh and everything and you know i have no problem with this is that they are trying to set up a platform for this ag to kind of wiggle out of and so he won't be uh, looked at in such a bad light but today tonight on this show we're lighting everybody up this is called elephant exposed and this attorney general needs to be held accountable for his lack and him not doing his job properly from the very start regardless to what regardless as to who he was hooked up to and rubbing elbows with Mitch McConnell a no because we're we're talking about a young lady that is no longer with us and she left here early and way before her time unnecessarily due to this crappy excuse of a police department when you talk about the affidavit, the conspiracy, the cover-up, all those things were not involved in the state prosecution. And it's more than fair to ask the Attorney General why, because it's very apparent today that the U.S. Department of Justice took a very different view of the situation. And we know Brett Hankison, he was the only officer charged that was for, fired, for shots fired into Taylor's apartment. He was only charged on the state level. He was acquitted. Now he's charged again in these federal charges. Will that acquittal have anything to do with these charges? Will it have any impact? Hey, uh, well, the first thing to say about oh. that is that, again, that reveals dissatisfaction on the part of the Attorney General, the United States Attorney General, and the Department of Justice with how this case was handled at the state level. If they believed that that charge against Hankison in the state prosecution had been handled appropriately and effectively, 
I think it's very unlikely that they would have said, let's take a second bite at that apple. And so they believe that they can prove these charges, that they can show that excessive force in violation of the Constitution occurred, and that if that didn't happen in the state prosecution, that that's a real problem about how that case was handled by the prosecutors here in Kentucky. Okay. And finally, right. we just have 30 more seconds, so it's going to be quick, but they are investigating LMPD as a whole. Individual officers can be charged. How do you hold an entire agency accountable if there is some problematic patterns there? Well, the short answer is you look for systemic reform. There you go. You say, here are the problems that were shown by what happened in Breonna Taylor's apartment. But let me stop right there. Let me stop it right there. Because even though he said a, a answer that I do not disagree with, let's take it a step further. In the words of Dr. Ritchie, instead of reform, how about replacement? Because that's what is that is what it, it is going to take. And I don't care if you do end up in a situation like uh, the small city in North Carolina just a, not too long ago, where the whole entire police department, even though it's a small town, put in their uh, re, uh, their resignations. Okay, that's fine, because we have other people that truly do want to represent the badge and the uniform in the proper manner. So this is why you do hear the black community uh, constantly and consistently, and we will continue to say black lives do matter because we knew that this was shady from the very start. And the onus is on this attorney general for not doing his job completely. And in my opinion, if this was being handled in the military, he would be going to see the old man for dereliction of duty. Because he did not handle this properly. Period. And he did it for political gain. Everybody knows that. And you are willing to be ignorant in that sense. If you don't think that that's what this decision was really centered around because of all of the political figures that was uh that uh that centered their interest that so when you when you take away all of the smoke when all the smoke clears they was just trying to use uh Miss Brianna Taylor's tragic death as a platform to make political moves. But this is nothing new. This is nothing new. But it's about time that injustices like these get exposed. And that's what we are here to do. Shows like TNTBS, Elephant Exposed, and TYT, Indisputable, and other uh, podcasts that are much have a much wider viewership than mine. This is why we are here to keep the truth out there, to keep people reminded, to keep everybody updated that these are real lives, and they deserve real justice. And real justice coming in the form of actual accountability, actual punishment, because if the shoe was on the other foot, had the colors had been reversed, 
this would not have even went to the United States Attorney General's office, period. The local prosecutor would have been on top of it, let alone talking about the state attorney general. So, like I said, again, I am a bit mixed emotion about this. I am glad that finally something is going to be done. And like how the guy said, uh, I'm sorry, like the uh, unite the U.S. AG said, you know, the because you get some of those officers are still working. Or worse, still working. And now we're going to hopefully see now and y'all just be ready for the ride because it's going to be a lot of hiding ducking lying a whole lot of gaslighting you're going to see a whole lot of people trying to play deaf dumb and blind and especially with this uh with the state attorney general but y'all buckle up and we'll keep on exposing it just like how we always do. So with that being said, y'all take care. I'll catch you later.